Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of John chapter 10 and I'll be reading verses 1 through 14. These are the words of Jesus and this is what it says. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. And a stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech, Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. Jesus therefore said to them, again, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and might have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd who is not the owner of the sheep, beholds the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Pray with me. Jesus, this morning, may we be strengthened by the good news that you know your own and your own know you. Give us those ears that hear your voice and obey. It's in Christ's name we, we pray. Amen. I read a story about a university that was having its weekly faculty meeting. The professors were all gathered together there in the meeting and the archaeology professor was the first one to speak. He reported that he had recently uncovered a lamp in the Middle East. And there written on the lamp was, were the words that said, whoever rubs the lamp, that therein contained that lamp was a genie, and the genie would appear. Well, the philosophy professor quickly reached over and pulled away the lamp and began to rub as hard as he could. And poof, this genie appeared. And the genie turned to the philosophy professor and said, Your wish is my command. What is it that you desire? Is it wealth? Is it wisdom? Is it beauty? And immediately the philosophy professor said, Wisdom. And then poof, the genie was gone. The rest of the, the faculty stood around watching the, the philosophy professor and said, Say something. Say something wise and with great insight. The philosophy professor blinked his eyes a couple of times and said, I should have gone for the money. <laughs> well, this morning we read a text, I think, that is among the most familiar, especially here in verse 10. And it says, I came that you might have life and have it abundantly. 
So often it is. I think when we think of that, that life that, that Jesus has offered and the abundant life that Jesus offers, that we think it's, well, it's whatever we want or whatever it is we think that we need the most. And Jesus becomes this big genie to give us whatever it is we want or whatever we think it is we need the most. And we start with the, the me. But that's not where Jesus starts in this. He says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd doesn't give the sheep anything that they think they want. The good shepherd gives them exactly what it is that they need. Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. And he starts off talking about the sheep. And this is verse 3. He says, the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And again in verse 14, he repeats the same idea. I am the good shepherd and I know my own and my own know me. He begins and ends this with intimacy. It's a knowing. Knowing God. And God knowing us. And that Jesus says that he knows his own and his own know him. That the good shepherd, the good shepherd speaks and listens. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. The good shepherd speaks and listens in an intimacy with God. In the movie Shadowlands, it's a movie about, there's a scene and it's a movie about the life of C.S. Lewis. C.S. Lewis has just returned in this scene from London. And when he was in London, he had, in a private ceremony, married Joy Gresham. She was an American and it was a private ceremony because she was dying from cancer in the hospital and they were married at her bedside. Well, she returns, he returns from London to Oxford and the first person that he runs into is, is a friend of his, Harry Harrington. And Harry says, ah, what's the news from London? Well, C.S. Lewis thinks about it for a minute and he decides he'll respond on the, the wedding rather than the cancer. And he says, ah, good news, I think, Harry. Yes, good news. And that's when Harry says, I know how hard you've been praying. And now God is answering your prayers. And this is how C.S. Lewis responds. He says, that's not why I pray, Harry. I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because the need flows out of me all the time, waking or sleeping. It doesn't change God. It changes me. Prayer. Prayer doesn't start with our wants. Prayer starts with an intimacy with God. So when Jesus gave his instruction on prayer, he said, pray in this way, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That yes, he instructs us to, to ask for our daily bread. Give us this day our, our daily bread. What it is we, we need daily. But prayer doesn't start there. Prayer starts and ends with God. Recognizing who God is. That he is the one whose name is hallowed. He is the one that is holy. That it starts with praise. It starts with gratitude. It starts with the good shepherd. The good shepherd who knows his sheep and the sheep know him. I'm thankful. I'm thankful that you're here this morning. That together, that we might seek to hear the voice of the good shepherd so we open scripture together. We open the Bible together and he speaks to us from scripture that together we pray we pray that we might know who he is that we might give praise we might give honor we might give thanks to him and hear his voice I'm glad you're here this morning that we might grow in an intimacy with God together together it's the way Jesus taught us to pray when he said, Our Father. That the good shepherd, the good shepherd speaks and, and listens to the sheep in a growing intimacy. And the second thing that I want to talk about this morning is 
Verse 9, Jesus says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he shall be saved and go in and out and find pasture. That Jesus is the door. Jesus is the one who stands guard of the fold. Jesus is the one that gives security. Years ago, I was visiting a family that was new to the community. I had set up an appointment with them to come by their house. And I was there on time. And I, 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 it was about six or seven o'clock, something like that. And I, I came to the door and I started to knock on the door. And that's when I noticed a handwritten door was, a handwritten note was taped to the door. And it said, no monsters allowed. Well, they knew when I was coming and I thought, well, is this note directed toward me or, you know, should I knock? Should I ring the doorbell or should I go home? And that's when the door opened. Sheepishly, the, the, the man grabbed the note and he said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. He said, I've got a four-year-old that finds it really hard to go to sleep in a new house. He's afraid of monsters and the only way that he finds any security at all is if we put a note on the door that says no monsters allowed. <laughs> he said, come on in. Well, then I was invited in. I, it was good to know the note wasn't meant for me. <laughs> well, sometimes it's four-year-olds that are afraid of monsters. Think about a story of, that Virginia Spring gave to, to Reader's Digest. She talked about a time where her family was, was gathered around the television and they were all looking forward to Pope John Paul II's arrival. His plane landed. They pushed stairs up to the plane and Joe, Pope John Paul II came out and ceremoniously and symbolically he, he kissed the ground. That's when her 80-year-old aunt turned to her and said, I know just how he feels. I hate to fly too. We all have our fears, whether we're four years old or whether we're 80 years old. Fear is the most universal of all the emotions. It was Adam who, who expressed this emotion when he turned to God and said, I hid for I was afraid. That fear, it's a natural thing for us, for us all. And one of the things that I've discovered that in those fears and and you know one of the fears that I that I have most is that fear of the death of people that I love the most that it grows when I feed it that fear grows when I feed it and in my experience this time that we're living in right now that there are more voices calling us to be afraid of the unknown Afraid of what's out there. Afraid of what's happening next. And we're called again and again by voices out there to be afraid and to be very afraid. Whether we're four years old or 40 years old or 80 years old. And I've found that whenever I turn to my fears, they're fed and they grow. Whenever I turn to my fears... Or turn to others, it tends to feed them. If I try and overcome the fears by myself, it tends to grow and I tend to feed them. It's only deliberately when I turn to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, the one who's the door, the one who guards my heart and my mind, the one who has strength enough in his hand to do something about those fears, those worries, those anxious thoughts. This is what the Apostle Paul was saying in Philippians chapter 4. He was sitting in jail, not knowing what the future would bring, not knowing whether he would be tortured, not knowing how he would be put to death, not knowing if he would remain in jail forever or if he would be set free, having no idea about the future. This is what he wrote to you and me in Philippians 4, 6, and 7. He said, be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all our understanding 
will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That it's Jesus who's the sentinel. It's Jesus that's the, the guardian. It's Jesus that's the, the, the one that guards the door of our, our hearts. It's Jesus that guards the, the door of our minds. It's Jesus who gives peace. Because he's the only one who has strength. Strength enough to do and to do exactly that. That he took all those things that would destroy us. And he took away their power once and for all. Jesus is the door who guards the sheep. And I'm glad that you're here. Because together in worship we might turn to him and find our strength. The last thing that I want to talk about this morning is Jesus is the one who lays down his life for the sheep. Verse 11, this is what Jesus says. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. David McCaslin tells a story about a time where he was driving through an intersection. He noticed there was a car stalled in the intersection and the hood was up. The woman flagged him down as he was driving through the intersection and asked for his help. He got out of his car and the woman said, I think if you jiggle the the wire on the battery, I'll be able to start it. Well, he reached over and he touched the wire on the, the positive terminal and that's when it came off in his hand. She said, my husband just jiggles it and then the car will start. He said, well, if you have a wrench... I can fix it permanently. She said, well, that's not necessary. My husband said if you just jiggle the wire that it will start. And then he began to wonder, well, why wasn't her husband riding around with her to jiggle the wire for her? He said, if I just have two minutes and a wrench, I can fix it for good. Because the next time you stop the car, you'll need someone to jiggle the wire to get it started again. So often it is, we turn to God hoping that he'll just jiggle the wire. That'll get us through this problem or the next problem or the the one after that. Jesus right here tells us, he points to the cross. He says, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. There are no half measures that will do. There's no jiggling of the wire. That what Jesus did for you and for me as he points to the cross as he took all those things on himself that would destroy us, that would conquer us, all those things that would defeat us. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf that we might be made right with God. He took on himself all those things that would defeat us, that would destroy us, that would conquer us. And on the cross... He killed them once and for all to take away their power. When he rose from the grave, he rose that we might follow. Not that we would be, continue to be chased by the monsters in this life, by our fears. But that we would follow him. He rose that we would have strength enough to listen to his voice. To give praise and and honor to him. He rose that we might follow instead of being chased by the monsters. He rose that we might choose, that we might choose to deliberately pay attention, that we might choose daily, all day long, to listen for his voice. This morning, I'm glad you're here. That together we can open Scripture. Together we can listen for his voice. Jesus tells us that we're two or more gathered in his name, that he's here. It's not your goodness or mine that we start with. It's his goodness that he chose to meet us here. That we might listen for his voice in the opening of scripture. That we might listen for his voice in prayer. And that we might follow. This morning, it may be that there are certain monsters that have been chasing you for a while. 
I have good news for you. That on the cross, Jesus defeated those monsters. He took away their power once and for all. And when you call on the name of the monster, when you call on the name of the fear, it does nothing. When you rehearse that fear, when you rehearse what it is that defeats you most, it doesn't shrink, it grows. Did we call on the name of the Lord? And his name is Jesus. Scripture tells us when we call on his name, we shall be saved. He is the good shepherd. And I want to invite you to call on his name now. Join with me in prayer. Jesus, this morning, we call on your name in praise. We all know enough to get started. Enough to, to look back on See where, where you've been in our lives to give thanks, to give honor to you, to give praise to you. That your strength, for those who turn to you, you give us eyes that see your hand that moves all day, every day. Jesus, this day, may we grow in an intimacy with you that, yes, we see your hand and yes, we hear your voice. And that we listen deliberately. We choose to, to have a disciplined dedication to, to listening for your voice. To see your hand. And to follow. Lord, there, there's a strength you have that we don't. And when you rose from the grave, you rose to, to give that strength to us. Not that we might get whatever we want, but that we might follow you and become the sons and daughters, the children that you made us to be. Breathe on us gathered here that we might listen, that we might grow intimate with you and follow. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi. Thank you for joining us. My name is Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our when God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.